Rotato Panera Metallica, or the Green-Headed Ant. They're a common ant that's found in Australia, and they're well known for their painful sting and their shiny green metallic colour. So how do you keep them as pets, and how do you start and look after a colony of this species? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. So, let's get started. Green-headed ants are an interesting, fascinating and fun species to keep. They're very rewarding. So how can you get a queen to start a colony? Well, before we begin the video, first of all, a disclaimer. I just want to say I'm not an expert by any means. All the information in this video is based on my experience in raising successful colonies. So let's see what we can find out. To start a colony, you're going to need a queen. Now you can buy a queen or you can buy a, a colony um, already set up and ready to go and I'll put a link in the description where you can do this if you like. But alternatively, you can catch one. Nuptial flights occur in the spring in Australia, usually starting around September. Here you can see a nuptial flight and if you want to watch the full episode on the nuptial flight, click on the card above. So to collect a queen, you don't want to catch a queen that's close to the nest. You want to get one that's away from the nest. Queens do not mate with the males or the drones from their own nest. So colonies will have their nuptials at the same time. So males from other colonies can mate with these queens. Here we have a queen with her wings. The queens are not like many other species. Their abdomens or the and thoraxes are not large like say the Campanotus species. The other winged ants that will be flying around will be the drones or the males. So here we have a couple of queens that were caught and they've still got their wings. So you can see their thorax size there, also their abdomens. They're not large at all. So as mentioned, the other flying uh, ants that you'll see around a nuptial flight are the drones or the males and that's as shown here so uh, apologize just for the footage here it wasn't the best um, but this is a drone you can see they're a lot more wasp like and they've got those long antennae and that small head so here we can see a little bit closer up on one of the queens again with her wings still on you can see the size of them here and their body shape now the queens are quite hard to tell um, apart from their workers once they have dropped their wings. They will be a larger size, but if she's out foraging herself, she will be quite hard to tell the difference. So I just thought I'd uh, give you a little bit of a close-up uh, footage here of the queen. So once you've uh, found your queen away from the nest entrance, you'll need to collect her. Now warning, these ants sting, okay? It can be quite painful, so be really careful. Get a test tube or a container to collect your queen. Try not to touch her at all. The next step, once you have your queen, is to set her up. Set her up into a founding chamber uh, to start that colony. So you'll need to set her up in a test tube. Now I've made a tutorial on how to do this, so you can click on the uh, card above if you would like to watch that video. But once you have her in this test tube set up, there's a few things you need to know. Now this species of queen ant is semi-claustral. Now semi-claustral means that during the colony founding stage, the queen will need food. The founding stage is from a single queen, laying eggs, having larvae, pupae, cocoons, all the way through to the first workers. Now these first workers are called nanetics. Now a fully claustral queen does not need food. And that's like this one you see here, the uh, Campanotus queen. So you'll need to feed your green-headed ant queen. She'll need sugars or carbohydrates. And the best form of this is honey. So put a small drop of honey on a piece of baking paper and put this inside the test tube. It's best to put it on this baking paper so you can easily remove that baking paper later. And it's not stuck in there on the test tube and you might get mold growing, which is very dangerous for a colony, especially a founding colony. It can actually kill them. Another food that is required will be protein. And this can be from any source. 
So you can use uh, use your imagination, anything you've got there, uh, chicken, turkey, ham, some protein, jelly, insects. I like to feed mine insects. So I use mealworms or crickets. Now this protein is needed for the larvae. They're carnivorous and it's essential for their growth. So once you have your first workers, then they'll actually go out and collect the food for the colony. The queen can now relax a bit and just concentrate on laying those eggs. So now it's uh, time to be patient. We're just going to patiently wait, uh, keep that food up to her, and you'll watch those eggs develop. So this is where the waiting game happens, but it's well worth the wait. Now this species is known to accept uh, multiple queens in a colony as well. So here you can see a dual queen setup. So the two queens just set up exactly the same way you would with a single queen. Just here in the test tube alone, of course, with both of those queens laying, you're gonna have a lot more eggs and that colony is gonna be boosted. So the next stage is that you'll have your queen, you'll have your first workers and some brood. So now you want to care for this new colony and keep it growing. You can see here, this is a fairly established colony. So by now, it may be getting quite hard to actually feed your colony. They may be trying to escape every time you uh, pull that cotton wool out of the end of the test tube. So now you can add an outworld. And this outworld will actually act as a foraging area for the workers. The outworld, it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be basic, and often that's actually quite good because then it means that it's easy to clean it out. The colony will need some essential things. They're going to need water. Now they can uh, have this supplied either via test tube that you set up and put into the outworld, or you can have it in a, another source as well. You can see here in this colony, it's progressed and the workers here are tending to those eggs and those hungry larvae there that are just desperate for some protein. So make sure you keep that protein up to your colony and then the growth will just come from that. Very essential to do that guys, do not forget. If you're looking for another way to supply water to your ants, you can use things like a liquid feeder. The one you see here in this uh, basic outworld that I've made, it's by, by Formica. So you can use those if you wish, or you can put a little dish in there with some water, or like I said before, just that test tube with some cotton there just placed in the outworld for them. So if you have a green-headed ant colony, one thing you'll notice is that they can't climb on smooth surfaces. So climbing up the plastic here on the outworld or any glass or tubing, just be aware of that. They can't actually climb up on that. So one benefit for this is that it makes them really easy to contain. You won't need to put Fluon around the edges of your container, which I like because Fluon is a little bit messy and doesn't look that great all the time. So if you have a nest for the colony, then ensure that the sponge is always kept nice and moist as well. This will provide humidity for the nest and also another water source. So you can see here the two sponges at the top there. Keep them hydrated and it uses that capillary action to get out through the nest. And the, uh, the actual workers there will drink from there as well. So make sure you're keeping water up to your colony. Without water, the colony will suffer and die. So as the colony grows, it's gonna require more and more food. So that's the carbohydrates, some sugar water or some honey. Again, you can use a liquid feeder or you can just add it to baking paper, which is one of my favorite methods in the outwell. So they can actually feed from that easily. And these guys are hungry. Also, you're gonna to wanna to keep that protein up for the development of the brood. Green-headed ants or Retida panera metallica ants, they're great to keep. They're fascinating to watch. You can see here inside the nest here with my macro lens, you can see what goes on. And it's really fascinating. It's a really interesting species uh, to actually keep and observe what happens here. 
So they are easy to contain, which is nice as well. They're a smaller species of ant, which means it won't take up a lot of room either. When the colony does get of a quite a large size here, one of my colonies is probably up over 100 workers now. So larger and larger outworlds and nests will be needed. Remember with these ants, they can sting and it can be quite painful. So be really careful. Um, don't keep them if you have a re allergic reactions to things like uh, the stings from ants or bees. Okay, just remember that uh, our kids, if you're watching this as well, just check with your parents beforehand. Well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this video on keeping the colony. As I said before, I'm not an expert, um, but this is just my experience in keeping these and I've had a lot of success in keeping this uh, species of ants and I've uh, raised many colonies uh, to certain sizes as well. And I've got some more on the way with uh, newly caught queens this season uh, in September. And they've already got their brood and they're well on their way uh, to starting a colony, which is great. And I have one of these uh, dual queen setups, which I'm really interested to see how that goes as well. Uh, so it's a little bit of an overview here. I'd love some comments, guys, uh, down below. Do you keep these ants? What are your experiences with them? Uh, do you find them easy to keep or are they quite difficult as well? Are there any other little tips that you would give uh, to people who want to keep this species? Here we can see a shot into the outworld. We can see them feeding here on a mealworm. These guys seem to love mealworms. Um, I don't know if it's just mealworms, but they love the crickets as well. But that protein uh, they can get right into. So this is the largest colony that I do have, uh, sh as shown here in the video. They're nearly packed out, uh, this nest. So I think I'm going to have to give it an upgrade fairly soon. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this uh, bit of an overview on the species of ants. I recommend keeping them if you do get the chance. If you've watched this far in the video, guys, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate uh, the support and you guys and girls have been fantastic with your support. I really appreciate it, it means a lot to me and it just keeps me motivated to make more content for you guys. So hit that like button, give me some comments down below, let me know if you enjoyed this video and uh, I'll be uh, making plenty more for you guys to watch. So by all means, have a look at the other colonies. I've got a, a bit of a series on the colony here that, um, that you've seen there in that green nest if you want to see a bit more in-depth footage on these guys as well. So thanks very much again for watching guys and happy ant keeping.